I'm sitting at the shipper where I'm supposed to pick up this ugly uh, mobile screening plant. That's the address they gave me. So there's a bunch of parking everywhere, but I see it on in the distance. I see the name of the company. It's called SS SSP Truck Line. So this is Milton. And I'm not blocking anybody, people can still get to this gas station, but I need fuel, but I don't have the card, you know, this is a card lock, there's no office, you have to use your card, like a special ESO card. And I see Werner Transportation over there, extra lease, but it must be at this location. I thought I would go straight, but it says stop, no parking allowed. Uh, construction access only. It says monitored via video, so it's all under surveillance. But I see their trailers over there. And even from here, I can read the phone number on the side of the trailer. And, and I didn't see any exit. Like when I'm entered from the highway, there was no entrance to this yard. So I'm pretty sure you have to go around like this. But it says construction only. So anyway, I called them. I found the phone number on the bill of lading that uh, they sent me and I call that and it says for customer service press 1 okay so I'm calling customer service and she's trying to f what's your truck number and I'm thinking why does she want my truck number uh, my truck number is nowhere in, anywhere on my paperwork so I tell her my truck number, 305, of course she cannot find me, and she says, uh, I said, I'm a carrier, I'm supposed to pick up a big ugly screen, screening plant, and she says, I'm confused, who gave you this load? <laughs> so I give her the name of the broker, and then she understands what's going on, so I'm, I'm guessing she knows the broker, because it's a, it's a big American company. And she says, give us half an hour. You see, like, how do they get to that spot? How do they get to that? Probably there was a... No, I'm pretty sure I didn't see an entrance. But I see in the distance where those big high voltage poles are, I see construction dump trucks. But these guys, okay, let's see. Yeah, okay, you see that guy over there? Is going left? Yeah, that's the that's how you get out. So there's a driveway there, which you know it's it, you cannot see from here because of the uh, bushes. So he goes in there. And there's another entrance there. So probably that guy. Let me see which way he's. For some reason, he's not getting out of this way, right? So he's probably getting out of that way. But it's a very confusing, it's a huge property. I know they, uh, they, rent, um, they rent parking spaces over here. Um, I know a friend of mine used to park his truck in here. And they have a truck and trailer repair shop here. It's a very big property, but I don't like it. Like if I, if I, park my truck here that means that I would have to leave my car and I think it's much safer where I am now you guys are in for a treat you know real life is always more interesting than fiction so if I was a writer well actually I am a writer I wrote a few books but 
Actually, I had an idea to write a, a, a book like this, you know, like a, like once I read when I was in Russia my favorite book because I always wanted to be a driver, but at first I wanted to be a taxi cab driver. I just love the you know the the aura of that job, you know. Uh, but anyway, one guy in Moscow, he was a Moscow cabbie. And he wrote a book called Moskva is Akna Taxi. Moscow through the windshield of a taxi cab. And it was so interesting. He was just, you know, right about, you know, interesting situations, interesting passengers he was running into. And of course, something was always happening. So that book read like a whodunit, you know? Like somebody was chasing somebody, somebody left a bag of money in the cab, you know? <laughs> and. It was my favorite book and so I thought at one point I was I was ready to write something like that but in English and about trucking because something interesting is always happening now just like I said I waited half an hour and I called customer service again and I told them I'm who I am and that I'm I talked to one of their colleagues before it's about this big screening plant and so this time then transferred me to a guy it was before I talked to a, to a female operator and I was a guy and I said I'm trying to find this machine somebody was supposed to come and get me and he says we were told that you are coming Tuesday and today is Monday and I said I just couldn't help but laugh you know I said really because I was just talking about this right before saying that if something can go wrong it will always will and they never know you coming right but this is even worse not only they they didn't expect me but they expected me on the wrong day and and he says Brad did not pay us yet I'm like who the heck is Brad and where is my machine and the guy says well we are carrier he says are you a driver or are you just a driver or a carrier I said I'm the carrier I, I have one truck so I'm just I'm the driver but I'm the carrier I'm independent carrier and he says yeah we are like you we are a carrier of course much bigger one with a bunch of trailers and he says we were hired by this guy Brad and we loaded the machine it's sitting now on our RGN trailer we ordered the permits and then the load was canceled and we were told that another carrier you is coming Tuesday to uh, transload it to their trailer and I said who the heck is Brad what company does he work for and he says oh um, I don't remember but he's the broker who hired us and I remembered something funny this guy Brad called me as I was talking to my broker this guy Brad called me and was offering me this load and I said hey I'm already talking to broker number two I said they're just confirming details and he says oh okay so you're moving it okay and and so I asked this gentleman from the carrier the shipper in this case right I said so where's the machine I know you have your main yard is in Windsor three hours away I said, is it in Windsor or is it in Milton, where I am right now, where they have the second yard? And he says, no, it's in Milton. It's sitting on our trailer. So I said, why we cannot load today? Why does it have to wait till tomorrow? And he says, because Brad did not pay us yet. And I'm like, wait, you're the carrier. Uh, paid you, paid you for what? He says, well, we loaded it. He says, we, we went out to the side where this machine was sitting we loaded on our trailer we brought it to our yard we ordered the permits for us and then he canceled the load so he has to pay us for loading and you know this moving around right and i agree right if i was if somebody sent me to pick up a machine and i brought it let's say to my yard in cambridge and i ordered permits and then they said um captain sergey we're sorry but 
you stink as a carrier so we're gonna give it to another guy that doesn't stink as much so and so I try calling my broker nobody's answering phones because they are in in on central time zone and I tried like 20 times nobody's calling I sent him an email so finally one guy the assistant to the broker calls me back and he says and he says he has no idea what I'm talking about <laughs> I said did you get this load from Brad and he says who is Brad <laughs> And I said, broker number one. And he says, no, we send you a bill of lading. You see on the bill of lading, it says the name of the manufacturer. He says, we got this load from the manufacturer, which is also the consignee, like where this machine goes in Ohio. That's where they are made. So like I said, the manufacturer shipped it here for demonstration purposes, right? So now they're ready to take it back uh, to US. And so they hired my broker uh, who hired me and it all looks legitimate because because uh, the bill of lading does say okay hold on and so I said uh, and I said remember I told you that I'm doing another load that I booked before you guys so I that load has priority because I promised the guy that I'm gonna load in Harrisburg that caterpillar right and so now since they're telling me it's delayed and I said shall I leave and this assistant guy says, um, no, just hang tight there. I'll call you back. And so while I'm waiting, I sent an email to my broker number two. And I said, I'm sorry, my load is delayed. Looks like they want to load tomorrow if they receive the payment. And so if I load tomorrow and let's say I deliver Wednesday in Ohio, it's still six hour drive to Harrisburg. So that means that I will only be able to load Thursday. And so I sent an email to this guy. I said, I'm sorry, my load is delayed. Can you load, can, can it wait till Thursday? And he says, he says, I, I, I asked the customer, I asked the customer, I'm waiting for their reply. So if these guys say that, no, they cannot wait till Thursday because originally we were shooting for Wednesday, right? So the plan was to load this big machine today, deliver tomorrow in Ohio, then use the rest of the day on Tuesday to do uh, 600 kilometers, 400 miles to Harrisburg and load Wednesday. So if they cannot wait till Thursday, they'll have to cancel this load. And I'll tell them to pay me at least like 300 bucks because I canceled my permits, by the way. As soon as this happened, I... Uh, I emailed my permit broker and I said uh, you know on the weekend I, I ordered the permits for Michigan and Ohio now my load is delayed please uh, put the permits on ice I will reorder them again when I'm loaded if I'm loaded and looks like I, I was lucky so she kept she stopped them right in time because again they are on central time my permit broker in Iowa and this was like 8.20 here, so it's 7.20 there. And I know they show up in the office at 7 o'clock their time. And so... Okay, hold on. Hello, Sergey. Yeah, hi. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll sit tight here. Okay, yeah, thanks. So this is the assistant to the broker, Mick. They talked to the manufacturer and they said the manufacturer, Kansaini, confirmed it's their load. And so they try and get a hold of this guy. I'm guessing this guy I talked to here at the shipper because they said they're supposed to offload it, give it to you. So he says, sit tight. Okay, we're sitting tight. That's the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the very, one of the favorite expressions of, of uh, dispatchers. 
sit tight or hang tight just hang tight hang tight sit tight and time now is 9 13 right so i got up at five o'clock you know like a good boy i got up at five o'clock took a shower drove my charger dark gray daytona edition eight speed auto 370 horsepower hemi v8 drove it to starbucks got my 50 percent decaf venti americano and i'm here right i was here at 802 
so it turns out this uh, wash is still open and uh, I told my the guy about it and he says oh yeah let's go I said but you paying he says no problem and so he paid for the wash I think they charge him like 60 bucks I just took off my uh, flags because I didn't want them to be covered in dirt and the guy said we did what we could but he says this stuff is like you know wood we cannot get it out I said yeah don't do any you don't need any metal bars or anything and yeah I loaded very fast because the the sales wrap the sales rep for the region he knows this machine very well and it's kind of like the the one uh, I, I drove which one I, I operated myself once at Terex Terex cheaper and that's all it does it uh, you put wood you put pieces of timber in there and it just turns them into 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 sawdust all right so I'm in Milton so this is like the next exit after where I loaded so we really got lucky with this truck wash One little trick I, 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 I'm using, you know, I have a I have a shade on that window on the passenger side. Yeah, that's where it used to be a truck stop in here called the fifth wheel. And then they went out of business. You see this whole area is now I'm guessing up for grabs. But I had no idea that the truck wash was still here. And it turns out it is, and it's open 24 seven. And I don't think I ever was at a truck stop where I don't have to wait. So they have two bays. I just went around and the second bay, the one closer here was, was uh, free. So I just pulled in, I double checked my height. I knew that I am below legal. I'm very because the machine is only 11 1 when I double checked I asked the sales rep I said like the corner the the roof is all flat right I said is there anything sticking out on the roof he says no and so I just I just measured to the top and it was 13 it was 13 2 There's a cop behind me. I'm not sure what his what his plan is. But I got my lights, I got my signs. And the engine is running very loud because I, I, I'm I have the I think it, it's doing that DPF cleaning thing. And so yeah, I'm in Milton, so my yard in Cambridge is west, about 40 kilometers, 25 miles, and I could go there. Oh, it's a paramedic, okay, it's not a cop. So I can go to my yard, but you know, I'm all sweaty, I'm all dirty, then I'll have to get in my car, drive my car, and then I have to find parking for my car. But it's already 5.30, I spent whole day in there. I got up at five o'clock. And so I decided not to go to my yard. I'm gonna go to uh, the next big 
uh, truck stop which is in London London Ontario one hour uh, west of uh, Cambridge and I'm gonna get like probably 50 gallons of fuel and I need def and that's a pretty big truck stop so I'm gonna stay there overnight because Port Huron is only one hour away and if you remember I had to cancel my permits because I was not sure if I was loading or not and so now I cannot cross into Michigan until I'm guessing 9 o'clock in the morning because my my permit broker comes into your office at 7 central time which is 8 my time and even if she's lucky and and let's say this is a self-issue permit if, so she can get it fast but first of all there can be other trucks in front of me right she can have she might need to work on other permits And so I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna see the 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 permit before nine. And so if I shut down at that London, it's only one hour away, so I can get up at seven, go grab a coffee, and be at the border somewhere around 8:30. And there's a little truck stop there at exit nine, right before the border near the uh, airport. I'm gonna sit tight there so like there's no no reason to to rush today you know what I mean the plan today is just get through this eternal construction here because here quite often they have you know traffic jams and Cambridge can be also very busy but yeah once they it took them it took them more than an hour to to super separate the neck from the trailer you know but once that was done the sales rep just drove it off and I parked my trailer so that he didn't have to do too much uh, maneuvers Oh yeah, I see. So Flying J is uh, 130 clicks away, which is uh, 70, 80 miles. So this, so I'm nine feet eight inches wide, 13 feet two inches tall, and I'm looking at my gauges. I'm less than 60,000 on the truck. I'm probably. I'm guessing somewhere like 52, 53, so it's not that heavy. And it's already uh, plus 33 Celsius. Wow, it's almost six o'clock and it's still plus 33. tomorrow I said I can deliver by the end of the day and 
it. So they were really happy to, to hear that because they, this guy had this machine sitting on his trailer for two weeks. shippers are looking for you know when you, you load the expensive load that costs a million bucks and then it's sitting on your trailer yeah when we stop I'll I'll uh, I'll show you briefly how I tie how I tie it down Actually, I, uh, I have two more chains here because I, I, I had to block the, the compartments with the chains. And so I, I took two chains, two binders that I want to put on the tracks because in the back it's pretty heavy. So I want to put two more chains on the tracks in the back. So I'll show you that and then I'll show you how I how I secured the machine but it was pretty easy because it has eyes, lots of eyes for tie downs except the they're very low in the front, they're very low you have to climb under. It was a bit of a challenge but not nothing I, I didn't do before. I'm dirty, as we say in Russian, грязный как чёрт. I'm dirty as hell. Yeah. All right, I made it to uh, Flying J. Flying J in London. Oh, hold on. Let me switch to uh, Super View. Hold on one second. Yeah, I had. I had to switch to change the angle otherwise when you're driving I'm using a more narrow angle but when I'm doing something outside and I want to show you more of the you know this vertical uh, area then that super view is great super view is great so uh, What's interesting is that the sky looks a bit like sky looks okay, but that way some very nasty looking clouds. And on the way here, I ran into two times, I ran into like maybe, I don't know, um, five kilometers long each, each time. It was about five kilometers, but the rain started like crazy out of nowhere, like very bad clouds and um, I had to slow down everybody was driving with with flashing lights like the first time I just dropped one gear I mean half a gear and just slowed down to 80 kilometers an hour 50 click 50 miles per hour but the second time was much worse and I had to go down to 60 clicks, 40 miles, you know? Yeah, I'll, I'll just show you what I want to do. I didn't want to put these... I didn't want to put these chains in the... in the side compartment because I hardly have any room in there. But I looked on the tracks, so now I know what I want to do. And the machine is all clean, thanks in part to the rain. But I just want to add two chains. That's it. Two chains, and I'll show you guys how I... How 
I connected everything. So I'm running with a lift axle down. So yeah, I see usually when it's a track like this I'm looking to see where there's a support because if you put a chain here it'll start going down you cannot tighten this it has to be either here or here all right so you put your chain and then you look on the trailer trying to see where my d-rings are in that position and so I found this all right and because I have uh, I have uh, See, I got chains there. Man, look at all that nastiness. So yeah, I used chain here through this hole and the same on the other side. And then I used in the front. In the front, you see they have this. They have these eyes. And I just hooked up the uh, the binder straight there <laughs> and so that's already four chains so that's 20 40 40 000 pounds and this machine is only like 75 but because the rear i'm pretty sure the rear is heavy so i want to put a chain in here but The problem I, I, I'm already foreseeing is that it's a very short distance here, you know? So it might be difficult to attach a binder. So even, even if we attach it like this, all the way to the top, you see what happens here? Okay, it's, actually it's not too bad. like this oops sorry and then somewhere somewhere here The problem oh, okay it started going somewhere See, that's why it's important to have that some kind of a support like the spot where you attach the chain must have some kind of a support like here or here otherwise you see what happening the track just the track keeps going down well this is good now i feel i feel better that this thing is here do the same on the other side and here is the same story I hook well here it's different yeah I hooked up like this and then I have to climb in there 
and do that so now So basically this thing is a, is a chipping machine. It's like a big chipper. might work Yeah, this thing was full of dirt in here so the guys did a very good job and only for 60 bucks Canadian Just put a. I don't think it'll get out. <sighs> Man. And so yeah, up there, yeah, basically shredder. That's what it is. And you see, this thing even has a. Uh, Kingpin. Not not sure how they plan to move it with the trailer. Interesting. Why would you need a kingpin? Yeah, on this side you see it's all wood. 
one a little bit of dirt but I guess that over here at this point they, they lost patience with this machine man nah, this should be okay I'll leave this one like this but it's still much cleaner before it was all covered in dirt especially in the middle so this is good so now I have uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So I got enough change to hold 100,000 pounds. And the sales guy assured me that this thing cannot go down. He says there's some kind of a hydraulic brake on this. I definitely don't want this to go on the, on the neck. Because it's a lot of weight. But I can see that somebody you know had this sitting here we'll see like worst case scenario I see there's uh, I see over there there's eyes maybe I can put a chain somewhere around here but they probably won't like that if I put a chain somewhere here and I don't know how to lift it you know if it gets uh, if it starts going down but again the guy assured me that it cannot go down like that's how it's designed but the good news is that I'm 13 feet 2 inches tall so they'll probably allow me to go on the tollway like because I, I, I'm going to um, towards Toledo and then I want to take 280 280 east to uh, I-90 right and that's how I can get to uh, to Avon Avon Ohio because it's right before Cleveland And that's it so from here it's one hour to the border and now I'm gonna go take a shower get some get something to eat and then I have to uh, I have to uh, send an email even though now they're not in the office but they're gonna see it first thing in the morning I'm gonna send an email to my permit broker and tell them to restart my my Michigan and Ohio permit and so hopefully I'll have them not I won't have to wait too long and also another thing I have to do is um, customs they don't like when you show up more than six hours after your ETA to the border you know because when you set up your customs your border crossing you tell them your approximate arrival and I said mine was uh, 10 a.m. I'm not sure why I was so optimistic I, I thought I would be you know loading at 8 and usually that takes two hours and then from Milton it's two hours to the border <laughs> but I told them eight, uh, 10 a.m. but now I'll be crossing probably at 10 a.m. tomorrow so I gotta go to the to that website and uh, do an edit edit the time and day and then send it to the customs again I hope I can remember how to do that because if you screw up then you come to the border and they turn you around call your dispatch I'm like what dispatch I'm my own dispatch but they always tell you call your dispatch you know something is wrong here so I might need to call uh, call the customer service at that uh, website where I do my customs just to make sure I don't make any mistakes because sometimes it's tricky you know when you're changing your arrival uh, sometimes it can be tricky anyway that's it thanks for watching thanks for your patience uh, but I got the load and I got 250 bucks 
for my patience so <laughs> that's good ciao